Let's play with Dragon Ball history, shall we? Planet Vegeta and its untimely destruction. It's awful that an entire race fell to Frieza's head, but this event was the catalyst that kicked off everything we know about the Dragon Ball series. Goku becoming the hero the world needs, Vegeta's internal struggles with his Saiyan pride, the awesome fight sequences, transformations, the longest five minutes on planet Namek, it all stems from this one moment. So what if the destruction of planet Planet Vegeta never happened. A better question, what if Bardock was able to stop Frieza? Well, this would change everything we know and love about Dragon Ball. Let's jump back 43 years to the moment that kicked off Dragon Ball as we know it. Age 737, location Planet Vegeta. Now, I rewatched both Bardock, the father of Goku, and Dragon Ball Super Broly, and there are two distinct differences between the two stories. In The Father of Goku, Bardock is having visions of Planet Vegeta's destruction, and that vision is proven to be true when his team is ambushed by Dodoria. Bardock returns to Planet Vegeta battered and seems unstable as he tries to convince the other Saiyans that Frieza is coming, who is already above the planet readying his strike. In Dragon Ball Super Broly, this ambush seems to never have happened, and Bardock is returning with the other Saiyans who were called back to the planet by Frieza. He only has a hunch that something is wrong, and seems to have a day or two before Frieza arrives, seeing that he arrived during the day and sends Goku to Earth at night. So, in our What If story, I want to combine the two timelines where Bardock, with visions racing through his mind, returns to Planet Vegeta battered from surviving Dodoria's ambush. However, this time, he has around three days to recuperate and try to convince the other Saiyans that Frieza is coming for all their lives. To stop Frieza, he's going to need all of the Saiyans' forces, and to do that, he has to go to the top. And that would be a problem. Due to the classism that existed on the planet, King Vegeta wouldn't be willing to meet with a low-class Saiyan like Bardock regardless of the reasoning. So, for Bardock to meet with the King of All Saiyans, he would have to fight his way through King Vegeta's palace, which he would, taking floor by floor till he reached the top. Although deemed a low-class Saiyan, Bardock was extremely powerful. It's mentioned in Bardock the Father of Goku that with the way that Bardock fights, which is fighting until he's almost sent to Otherworld, he could soon pass King Vegeta in power due to how the Saiyans grow stronger with every battle. That was before the ambush, and with Bardock storming the castle now, his power likely rivals King Vegeta's or even surpasses it. However, once Bardock reaches the top, he wouldn't use this power against the king, even though it would be simpler to force him into submission. He only wants to talk, and King Vegeta allows it until forces arrive to subdue Bardock and take him to prison. Although this all seems unlikely to King Vegeta, he would take this information and mull it over until having the Saiyans monitor the skies for any signs of anything out of the ordinary, even putting the Saiyans on standby for attack. When the fateful day came, the Saiyans were now ready, and Bardock would be released to join the fight. Only moments would pass before the starry skies were filled with practically every Saiyan on the planet below. Frieza would release his own army, and the deadly battle would commence. Bodies would fall on both sides, one after the other, but as time went on, the Saiyans would begin to overwhelm the Frieza force. This angers Frieza, much like it did in the original timeline, forcing him to take matters into his own hands and launch his supernova attack. Bardock launches an attack of his own, halting Frieza's attack for a moment. Although strong, Frieza's power is still too great as his supernova creeps closer and closer to the planet. Bardock can't hold on alone, and this time, he isn't. One by one, the surviving Saiyans launch their own attacks until the supernova is stopped in its tracks and pushed back to its source. With a light blinding the skies, the supernova, along with the combined attacks from the Saiyans, crashes into Frieza and his ship, both evaporating into nothing but space dust. Victory! With Frieza's demise, the Saiyans are free from his rule of tyranny, right? Not quite, because there would be consequences. Frieza's unexpected end would force King Cold out of retirement, and war would break out on planet Vegeta. This would be the Saiyans' greatest test of strength. Could they hold out against the full might of the remaining Frieza force? I would say yes, and here's why. 
Although not confirmed, many fans believe that Frieza was much more powerful than his father. So taking Frieza down already puts the Saiyans at an advantage, and then there's the power they gain when a full moon is present, last being in age 730. On planet Vegeta, the full moon comes every eight years, and wouldn't you know it, our war takes place in age 738, meaning the full moon would return when they need it most. The war is over. Over the next 16 years, the planet would rebuild. Also, many things would begin to shift in Saiyan culture. For one, Bardock would be viewed as the hero who saved the planet and would be promoted within the Saiyan ranks. In turn, the idea of high and low level Saiyans would dissipate, ending the classism that exists over time. Although given the chance to, now that Frieza isn't dictating their every move, the Saiyans would continue to act as tyrannical beasts conquering planets in nearby systems. This would lead back to the original timeline as one of the planets on their list is the backwater planet named Earth. This would be the moment where Bardock lets his secret go that before the war he sent his son Kakarot to Earth. Being that Bardock is the hero of Planet Vegeta, this is forgiven because this should mean that Kakarot should have already conquered the planet. To be sure, Bardock would be sent to Earth to scout Kakarot's progress, and Raditz and four other Saiyans will arrive shortly after. Fast forward and we are now on Earth post Piccolo Jr. Saga and much to Bardock's surprise, the Earth at peace. Citizens walk the streets, children play, and birds chirp as they fly through the sky. Unlike Vegeta and Nappa, who laid waste to the first city they stepped foot in, Bardock only watches in confusion. Why hasn't his son laid waste to this planet? Soon he'll have his answer, because suddenly an orange cloud passes by and a reading flashes in Bardock's scouter. He flies off and eventually comes face to face with his son. This would be an interesting encounter for both men, as they would practically be looking themselves in the mirror. Much like Goku's interaction with Raditz, his interaction with Bardock goes the same way, telling him that his name isn't Kakarot, but Goku, and he's from Earth. Also, because it's Goku, he would want to fight his father because he looks strong. Bardock agrees, however the fight ends just as fast as it started. At this point in Dragon Ball, Bardock is much stronger than Goku, which just makes Goku want to train harder, even asking him to promise to give him a rematch one day. I can already see Bardock laughing from the pit of his gut because Goku is just like Bardock when he was younger. This is their bonding moment that I know all fans want to see in canon. It would go even further when Goku invites Bardock to his home to meet his wife Chi Chi. Until the Saiyans arrive, this kind of interaction would continue and Goku would show Bardock what Earth is all about. He would meet the likes of Bulma, Krillin, Master Roshi, and the other Z fighters. Bardock would know what peace is, which would shake him to his core. Is this something the Saiyans could gain too if they changed their way of life? That's a question he would have to answer soon, because the other Saiyans are about to knock on Earth's door. Unlike the original timeline, the Saiyan saga would begin much earlier as Raditz and the four other Saiyans touch down on Earth. Much like Bardock, the state of Earth perplexes them all. Where's the chaos? The screams for mercy? Well, if a job's not done right, then you gotta do it yourself. With an explosion, East City goes up in smoke. All across the planet, the Z fighters would feel the loss of life and the combined power levels of Earth's new threats. However, they have no idea who or what is coming. The only one who knows is Bardock, whose fear has come true. Bardock would have to tell Goku the truth, that he isn't here to reunite with his son, but to conquer Earth because that's what Saiyans do. However, the time with Goku has changed him, and now, rather than conquer Earth, he will defend Earth just like he did on planet Vegeta. The two fly off to the now decimated East City and the other Z fighters follow suit. Now, being that we are still in the Dragon Ball time period, none of the Z fighters have the strength they did in Dragon Ball Z. In that timeline, they could barely handle Nappa, and Goku had to lose his life to defeat Raditz. So if it was a struggle then, think about now. Good thing Bardock is on their side. Bardock's power level at the time of the war was above 10,000. 16 years have passed since then, so his power level has only gone up exponentially. Comparatively, Raditz's power level is around 1,300, let's say. This number is based on his power level around the time of Z, which was 1,600. The four other Saiyans sent would be below even that. This is something Bardock knows, so before the fight begins, he would try to convince the other Saiyans, and more so his son Raditz, to give up. 
He would tell them to look at the world around them, the peace that's present. This is a life the Saiyans could have too if they could move past their primitive ways. This of course would be to no avail. The Saiyans would think Bardock was a fool and begin their assault. Wrong move, because Bardock makes quick work of each of them. Think Trunks versus Mecha Frieza. Each of the Saiyans would make Earth their burial site, except Raditz, who is brought down to his knees with a gut shot. Bardock would plead for his son to stop this madness, but that Saiyan pride wouldn't allow Raditz to do so. Bardock powers up his final shot, but, like father like son, he can't do it and lets Raditz go. That mistake would prove deadly, because once he makes it back to planet Vegeta, the Saiyans will return in droves. Like in the original Saiyan saga, the Z fighters only have about a year to get ready for their eventual get-together with the Saiyan army. Although their fight wasn't too long ago, Goku would even have to recruit Piccolo because without him, the Earth will fall, taking away Piccolo's chance to do it himself. Day after day, the fighters would train until a year passed and the Saiyans returned. However, this assault is nothing like before. The amount of space pods that fall through the heavens mimics an invasion. This is overkill, but for King Vegeta, this is just the right amount of force to prove to the galaxy that the Saiyans shouldn't be taken lightly and shouldn't be crossed. Although stronger, the sheer amount of numbers would overwhelm the Z fighters. One by one, each would fall, including Goku, who is nowhere near the power level he was when he fought Vegeta for the first time. Bardock, hero of planet Vegeta, would fight till his last breath until he too was no more. The Earth, like many planets after, would fall to the wrath of the Saiyan race, all because Bardock defeated Frieza and saved the Saiyans from their fate. Oof, maybe Bardock should have let Planet Vegeta be destroyed. So uh, what do you think of this what if? Are we spot on or does this story take another route? Let's chat in the comments. Oh, and uh, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more CBR content.